Hello and welcome back to my channel. I hope you've watched the first segment on life as a Caribbean medical student, life on the island. This segment is life as a Caribbean medical student, life in the U.S. Stay tuned. So, um, if, if you've watched the first video, I think I mentioned in there that I was on the island for about two years. Anyway, I came back home in December. In December. So, that December when I got home, I was with family for a while and I knew that I could not study at home. Home is Pennsylvania. I knew I couldn't study there. So, I stayed there until New Year's. A few days after New Year's, I moved to Chicago. I packed up all my stuff like I have if I go home right now I have to pack bags to go there because I have nothing there um I packed up all my stuff and my parents drove me to Chicago like 11 hours or so yeah and came with my sister again so my parents and my sister we came to Chicago and I'm an adventurer okay like I'm the one I love to go places i love to see things i love 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 to travel so adventures are my thing i'm not saying that they don't scare me i'm not saying that they don't make me nervous i'm not saying that i don't get lonely but they're my thing so my parents dropped me off and i just knew that i needed to be here because i couldn't study at home and like i mentioned in a previous video we need to take time off after life on the island to do a review program and i chose kaplan so my kaplan review program was in Chicago so I came early to start studying before the review program um the review program I did Kaplan for 14 weeks it was good but I, a lot of time I felt like I was wasting my time um we would go and we would have different lecture series so we would have like a embryology lecture we'll have a microbiology lecture we had a pathology lecture things like that and then we had like small groups where we break up into small groups and do questions and ask do cube questions and like pamphlets and then ask questions to the person that was leading the small group like the instructor or the tutor ask them questions usually the person leading the small group was already was also a student who has already done step one or very close to doing step one they would have to take an exam and see how what it did to be able to teach the class. But they were being paid to tutor us, basically. And um, the small groups were okay because we got to discuss and kind of share ideas. So like if I didn't understand something, somebody else probably did. And they could explain it better. If they didn't understand something, I did not. Guess it. it was okay. But I really felt like a lot of time I was wasting my time. I felt like I could do a lot more by myself at home. Um, so I did, I finished it though, I got through it while working, then the time I had two jobs. I have always had multiple jobs, that's just me, I'm always juggling something. Number one, I love to shop, um, I love to buy stuff, like I love to spend money, like I buy a lot of random things, um, and I like, I don't know, like I just like to be able to sustain myself, and I'm not the ones who always call my parents and ask for money. Like they were doing enough already with paying my rent, paying my tuition, all of that. So I wanted to be able to at least buy a bottle of water on my own. So I went ahead and got two jobs, two part-time jobs, and they were okay. So I did the review program. I completed the review program, and I was just studying for step one, and it was not easy. For my school, and a lot of other schools are starting to do that now, you have to take comp. So comp is a comprehensive exam. Pretty much, it's an NBME, a National Board of Medical Exam, Examinees or Examination. Is that examination? National Board of Medical Examination? It's an NBME. I forget what the E is. Exam, examination, examiners, something. I forget. So, pretty much the comp is all of your basic sciences. Your biochem, your embryo, your 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 pathology your pharmacology that's all of what you've learned in your two years of medical school that's pretty much what they're testing you on so you have to take a comp and you have to get a certain score for the school to allow you to take your first board exam this exam i took three times 
The first two times I came really close to passing, but I didn't get there. And I remember before I took my third one, I was just like, oh, I feel like I'm doing everything right. And this is, I'm going to do a separate video on how I struggle from a little bit of depression because I felt like I was doing everything that I was supposed to do. Like, I wasn't going out. I wasn't seeing the light of day. I was in Chicago in the summer. And if you've ever been in Chicago in the summer, summertime shy, summertime shy is lit. Okay? I didn't do anything. I was in the library from morning to night. And I feel like I wasn't getting, what I, getting out what I was putting in. And before I took my last comp, I called my dad on the phone. I remember I was sitting at my dining room table one day. And I was studying and studying and studying and I was tired. Not just physically, emotionally, mentally. Like I was just tired. I was drained. And I called my dad one day and I was just like sobbing. Like I didn't even say hello. Like, like I'm sobbing like an ugly cry. And I'm just crying. And I'm just like, Daddy, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Like let me say that. Like I'm and I just started I'm like what am I doing wrong I don't know what else to do and in my head was like I need to pass this exam if I don't pass this exam and it wasn't just the comp it was my board exam if I don't pass it I spent so much of my life getting to this point and if I don't make it through what am I going to do with my life like I can't see myself being anything else I don't have a plan B like I only have a plan A so if I don't do well what am I gonna do and I had like this panic attack and anxiety and everything and my dad's my rock he was just like just cry it out just cry it out and I just cried 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 and I got over it. he was like you'll be fine and my dad's a prayer that's my prayer partner and he prayed for me and I like a lot of times I, I'm a kind of person I need to like sob like I'm like a emotional but also like very thuggish too so I would have to like cry things out and I'd be like Cool. I got my one breakdown out for the month for a couple months I'm good something else happens I gotta shrug it up because I had that one breakdown and I'm not allowed in the breakdown for another three four months <laughs> so like that that's I'm laughing but I'm really serious that's how I think like I'm not gonna spend so much time crying once I had that my one breakdown and a lot of times I feel like I need those to just get all of that stress and tension out and I can think clearly and move on with my life so I did that. My dad prayed. My dad prayed for me. We. I moved on. Thank God, I passed my comp and I took my step one. So after you take step one, this USMLE step one. After you take step one, most schools then allow you to start doing your clinical rotations. So actually, before I started took step one, I did a semester of electives. So my school, once you get a certain score. They allow you to start doing it like this. So I didn't fully pass my first two comps, but they allowed me to start doing it like this. So I did three like this. That's the semester. So four, four, four. That's twelve weeks. Then I took step one. Then I started doing my course. My first clinical rotation, my elective was an OB gyne elective. I went in there. I was so excited. I had my lab coat, my stethoscope, my books. Like I was prepared to learn. I said that office, it was about 15 to 20 of us in a very small office space. And pretty much this guy was just like racking us up and collecting money from our schools because we weren't seeing a darn thing. My entire four weeks there, I saw one NST in an ultrasound for an ob guy rotation. Not one pap smear, not one C-section, not one delivery. Man, I was livid. I was so upset because my thought process was, I feel like I got a lot on the island. I feel like I was cheated. I feel like I didn't learn a lot from my professors. I feel like a lot was lacking. So when I came back to the States and I was thinking clinical rotations in the US, Okay, I endure what I could endure on the island. Now I'm here and I'm going to get the best education possible. You know what I mean? That was my thought process. And that wasn't what I expected. And I was upset. I was like, you cheated me on the island. You're not going to cheat me in the U.S. Like, you're not going to cheat me in clinical rotations. What am I paying for? And it hurts more because I see how much my parents have to work to pay for my school. So I'm not about to just sit around and waste money. And definitely not my time. So I was upset, I contacted the school and they were like, okay, let us know how it's going, we're going to fix it. 
And I really had to sit back and think to myself, like, this is a business. And at the end of the day, they just want my money. I have to have my best interest. And if I'm not able to see what I want to see here, let me talk to this guy. So I was like, and at the time, what made it worse was that I was interested in being an OB guy then. And I talked to him, I was like, hey, like, it's just a thing, I, I really want to do with this. Can I see more surgery? Can I see surgeries with you? Because he was affiliated with a lot of hospitals. I mean, this guy came with a lot of accolades. I looked him up. But when it came to his clinic, he was he just packed a bunch of international students in this tiny clinic on the west side of Chicago, which wasn't safe. And this was winter in Chicago. And if you ever been to Chicago in the winter, you know not to be in Chicago in the winter. So, he would even tell us, like, when you come here, don't dress so nice. Make sure you look crazy because you don't want to attract any attention to yourself and blah, blah, blah. I endured the weather. I didn't have a car here at the time. I had to take two trains and a bus to get to this place. I get here just to sit around and study. I could study at home for free. Then he would be like, turn on the TV, turn on the computer, go to YouTube, and blah, blah, blah. I didn't even do it. If you've seen my previous videos, I do usually do a review of my uh, rotations and how to leave my shelf. I didn't even do one on this. This is a uh, elective. I did a core or began a rotation, which was better. But this is my first elective, and I was so upset. Anyway, I got through that one, and my next elective was pretty good. It was the psych rotation at the Lakeshore Hospital, which was really good. So I was like, okay, maybe that was just one, you know. Um, oops. And from there, I think what I realized, and this is something that I'm going to tell you, is to make friends early. Not just people at your school. You're routine with a lot of other international students. So a lot of my friends don't even go to my school. They go to other schools. But we all kind of rotate at the same locations together. That's how we meet other people. And they will tell you, hey, I did internal medicine with this doctor. He was really good. We did this, this, this. He had this surgery with this doctor. He was really good. We did this, this, this. That's how you find out information. That's how you find out what materials did you use to study for your exam? How do I prepare for this thing? How, like Talk to people and that's how you find that stuff. Majority of the things that I'm telling you, the things that I learned, I didn't find out from my school. Things that they need to tell me, they didn't even tell me. I didn't even find that one grant. Okay, so I was talking, this is side, sidebar, sidebar. I was talking to a friend in my most recent rotation, and he was like, oh, yeah, so, you know, you have to email the school to tell them to add you to the graduation list. I was like, what? Excuse me? I've completed all of my requirements to grad. I'm going to, all my, all my requirements to graduate are going to be done even before deadline for graduation. I'm assuming I'm just already going to graduate. I have to email you to let you know that I want to be added to the list for graduation. What if he didn't tell me this? So I wouldn't have been able. To, I wouldn't be able to graduate this year. Just like simple things like that. You don't know. You just randomly find out from people, which is why I'm going to tell you this: talk to people, make friends. Honestly, for me, this is something that I had to learn because when I'm in like my zone. When I first started rotations, I was like, I'm not really here to make friends. I'm here to do what I gotta do and keep it moving. Turn of vision. But you have to talk to people because that's how you find out information. You know what I'm saying? That's how you find out what study materials you need, you know, what to expect, what the requirements are, and things of that nature. So, my other few rotations after that were pretty good. I mean, so my school, they set up the rotations for us. So usually they have like a few preceptors lined up. So like for internal medicine, it would be like, we have this guy, this guy, like I said before, I would already talked to a friend who would have said, oh, I had this guy, this is what we did, he was cool. And then maybe somebody else had the other guy and then I can get, kind of get to pick from the two. I don't rely on my school for telling me who to go with because honestly, I don't even think they've ever met these people. That's my opinion. Um, so I don't even know if they would know what to expect. Students that have been there, those are the people that you can get the best information from. And it's honest information because they're not being paid to tell you a certain thing. And they would tell you, hey, this guy does this. Expect this. You will see a lot of patients. You won't see a lot of patients. It's a lot of outpatients. It's a lot of inpatients. These are things that they would tell you that depending on what you have going on, what you need to do. Like... For example, some rotations, I'm like, well, I don't want that specialty. I'll just study and pass my shelf exam while I work. 
You know what I mean? Because I need to work. I need to pay rent. So, different things. Um, that's kind of how I weigh, like, okay, what rotation am I going to take next? Like, I want to do internal medicine and pediatrics. So, I wanted, like, those rotations to be intense. And I wanted to learn as much as I could because that's something that I'm looking into. But something like emergency medicine isn't really what I want to do. So, I'm going to go to the rotation. I'm going to do my best. But I'm not looking for the best you know preceptor for that rotation i don't know if that makes sense so depending on what you want to do and what you you know interested in that's kind of how you can gauge like what preceptor to look for um so yeah the school sets up the rotations they have the connection with the doctors we don't have to do it we just say hey could you set you we email the coordinator for the rotations and tell her what we want to set up when we want to start and stuff like that um what else would you want to know let me look at my list. How was the transition? The transition was very, very bad for me. Like, coming straight out of the book and going to the clinical setting, there is no in-between. Like, the school doesn't prepare you to see patients. They don't teach you how to do blood pressure. They don't teach you how to listen to heart sounds. How to use your stethoscope properly. Thank God for the University of YouTube. Thank God for YouTube because a lot of things that I learned were from YouTube. A lot of things that I learned were from some other friends. Friends that knew how to do blood pressure properly, knew how to listen to heart sounds properly, knew how to do a, pre a proper history and physical. I didn't learn this from my school. Okay, there was no class that said, this is your transition between your book work and the clinic. It was just boom into the clinic. You go into a rotation and preceptors are expecting you to know certain things. You don't know it. Because you haven't been trained properly. And if I didn't take time to myself to say, wait a minute, I need to know how to do basic things, I wouldn't have known how to do it. People, there are people who don't know how to take a proper pulse. You know what I'm saying? So these are things that weren't taught to me. These are things that I have to teach myself for yeah, YouTube or from a friend. So my transition was not easy. Um, did you feel prepared? I didn't. I wasn't prepared. I was not prepared. And I thank God because a lot of the preceptors were very understanding. They knew, you know, okay, that's why you're here. You're here to learn. So being a part of medicine and being on this journey to become a medical doctor, you have to be spiritual. You have to believe in a higher power. I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. You can believe in whatever, you know, whatever you want, whoever you want. But you have to believe in something. Because this this journey will test you. It will try you. It will be draining. It will push you. You need something to just give back. I don't know. You, you need something to help you. Okay? You need to believe in something. You need something to give you hope. And I always say this, you need some kind of spiritual belief to really make it through because it is trying. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. At all. So you need something. Um, so that question I was answering was, would you, would you say spirituality, religion is important? And yes, a, a million times yes. You need to believe in something. Um, how do you find balance? For a long time, I struggled with balance. Like I said before, I think I went through a brief period of depression while studying for step one because I will go into the library, the sun will be down. I will come out, the sun will be down. I hardly ever saw the sun. I didn't do anything. All I did was work and study, work and study. That will drive you insane. Work without play did what? It made Jack a doll boy. You don't want to be doll. It's going to drive you crazy. You need to find balance. If you're going to study six days a week, take one day off to watch a movie, run, see the sun, relax, watch, do something. You can't study 24-7. Unless you're capable of doing that, do you boo-boo. But I know for a fact, I figured out that that was not me. It drove me literally insane. You need to have balance in whatever it is that you do. Balance is a definite key. You need balance. Find time to relax. Don't lose sight of your study, but don't lose sight of who you are. Don't lose sight of yourself. 
time, time to take care of yourself. Go to the spa if you can afford it. Get a massage. Walk by the beach. Do something to relax and decompress because you will break down if you don't. Um, do you have a support system? What is it like? I have the best support system ever. My family is so bomb. I love them so much. Um, there are people that don't have people, someone that pays their tuition. A f my friend had to take out multiple loans to put herself through school and to pay her rent and to do everything. All I have to worry about is paying my rent and whatever else. And I thank God for that. And it's not just that. I can literally call my dad 3 a.m. and he'll pick up the phone and he'll listen to me babble on about nothing. My support system is amazing. My younger brother, Sam, who I love so much, that was like my first best friend, he also pays a part of my tuition, which a lot of people probably won't believe. And it's kind of sad because he's younger than me and I graduated school way before he did, but clearly this career choice is like a lifelong situation of being broke. It ain't cute. But I'll pay you back, Sam. I promise. So yes, my support system is amazing. My mother is amazing. My father is amazing. My sisters are great. My, like, my support system is beyond incredible. And I'm, like I said previously, I'm more than blessed to be in my situation. What else? Are there students from your school who are residents or are practicing? Yes, there are a few students that I know personally that are residents and that are practicing. So there is hope. There is definitely hope. There are students that went to my school that are practicing. There are students that I want, know that went to other Caribbean schools that are practicing. What you put in it is what you get out. Once you kill these exams, I'm telling you, you'll find a job. It's all about your test scores. Go into school number one knowing that you got to kill your board exams. And I think you'll be great. I think you'll be fine. You'll be Gucci. <laughs> um, what was the overall pros about your experience as an internal? What do I always say internal? What was the overall pros about your experience as an international medical student so far? What are the cons? The pros are that I don't have to spend as much money as U.S. medical students. That's my opinion. And um, a con, I feel like I have so many cons. Con number one is that I don't have the same resources that they do. I wish that I did. I don't have a uh, level up when it comes to residency applications and finding a residency because a lot of programs are not familiar with my school or schools overseas or they just don't trust the system overseas. Um, I wish I would have, let me say this to you. If you're able to get into a U.S. medical school, get in. Get in. If you can't, that's okay too, boo, because that's not the only way. There are multiple paths to one destination. But if you can take the path that is a little bit less bumpy and rocky, definitely go with that path. My path, I felt like there were so many ups and downs, and it just kind of went like a roller coaster. And I had to put on three seat belts and hang on tight because I knew I was riding this thing to the end. It wasn't as easy, and I'm not saying U.S. medical schools are easy, but I think it's less stressful because you have a system in place to support you and to make sure you make it on the other side of life. Um, were all of your rotations in one location? So my school has rotations in Chicago, Atlanta, and Houston, Texas. I chose Chicago because Chicago is IMG friendly, meaning that there are a lot of hospitals in Chicago that are open to international medical graduates. So I wanted to do all of my rotations in a location where it would be easier for me to get a job. And I would be familiar with the place. I would 
it will be easier for me to contact you know certain people it will be easier for me to go and see them because I'm already in the same location for example if I was in Houston and interested in applying in Chicago I wouldn't really know the system because I had not been I have not I had not been here yeah so that's why I chose Chicago and also because my school has been in Chicago the longest so I feel like they have more connections with preceptors in Chicago that's why I chose um, does your school make you take shelf exams? Do you find them helpful? Shelf exams are specialized exams, and I say that, but uh, I mean this. There is a shelf exam for each specialty. So after you take your surgery rotation, you take a surgery shelf exam, which is just specialty focused. So it's like all of your questions are going to be surgical questions. You take family medicine shelf exam, you take pediatric shelf, shelf exam, or be guided shelf exam, and internal medicine shelf exam. My school makes me take those, and I find them very helpful because it keeps me on my toes, it keeps me studying. And these shelf exams are also going to prepare me for my board exam. So I find them very, very helpful. Not every school make, makes their students do this, but a lot of schools I see. I see are coming around to this concept of making their students do shelf exams and they're very 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 helpful it's at a pro metric center they fingerprint you they scan you they pat you down you can't wear jewelry you can't have you can have pockets but they make you empty out your pockets they check your glasses it's like a well protected center where you go in and take a you take an exam um, so yeah that's what we do our shelf exams this is the same place we take our board exams as well Yep, and I find them to be very, very, very helpful. How do you pay for school? Do you work? Um, my parents pay all of my school-related expenses. Everything else, I pay for my rent, my my gas in my car, my food. Everything else that has to do with me outside of school, I pay for. Um, I work. I have three part-time jobs, as I said previously. And I will go into a video of like my personal life, who I am, what I do, because I don't think I've ever done that. So, um, but if you're like me and you end up choosing an alternative path, that's okay too. But I just want you to remember that it's all in your mindset. It's how much you put in. What you put in is what you get out. If you put in the time and you put in the effort, your support system is amazing. You will make it on the other side. You will be a doctor. You just have to keep trying. I think I covered everything in this video. I really hope I did. If I didn't, like I said before, leave the comment in the uh, comment section. I'll get back to you at my earliest convenience. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you. People have been asking me about videos like this for the longest time. And here it is. I'm going to talk to some a few other people from other schools and see what their experience is like. Hopefully this gives you a well-rounded view of options when it comes to Caribbean medical schools or just international schools, period. Once again, my name is Doc Martin and you've been watching Fearless 11. See you in my next video.